Hey, 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 friends. All right, day two on this shower prep. We're gonna um, get right into it today. We're gonna scrape, scrape down all the seams. We're gonna uh, make sure all the mud uh, dried correctly, take down any high spots, fill any voids. And we're gonna put that first application of water barrier on. Buckle your seat belts. All you need for this step is this bad boy right here. This is an easy step. So this is the, this bad boy right here, right? You want to go over everything, okay? You want to go over everything because there's there's stuff that you won't see. So go ahead anywhere that you mudded, anywhere that you mudded, just hit it with the trash. Every single spot. I'll show you a couple examples. So you see that little mud chunk right there? Got to get those off because once you red guard, you're going to have to scrape off the red guard or the hydro band or whatever waterproofing you use. You're going to have to scrape that off with this chunk because you don't want that little knob to affect your tile setting. All it takes is that. See anywhere where it got a little bubble? It was a good example of why you have to come back and scrape. That's all it takes. Be nice and smooth for tile setting. So just be sure to go through the whole shower, hit all your screw spots, hit all your tape seams, get a good run over with your uh, scraper, and then it'll be time to put your barrier. going to show you how to do those corners. Make sure you get a lot of material in there and then take it out. If you, uh, 
if you leave too much material in the corners, that's where it's gonna crack because it's not supposed to be very thick. So a couple tricks um, and tips, the whatever product you're using, you put one application, most of them, it's just gonna be an anti-fracture membrane, which is gonna be used on maybe floors that you might think you get a fracture, you know? Uh, it's commonly, one coat is commonly used on a concrete floor for a vapor barrier. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go over this whole thing one time, and then we're gonna come back and go over it a second time. The first time takes a little bit more material because it's really absorbing it in the, in the dry material. And uh, the second coat goes a lot quicker. So the second coat is where a lot of the companies will say you're actually getting your waterproofing. So um, it's not made to go on super thick. So put it on thin, you want thin applications, otherwise you're gonna have a big old gooped up chunk and you'll probably get it, to, it'll probably crack. So thin coats, a couple thin coats, get a lot of material in those corners and then drag it out. That way you just know you got coverage. Don't leave a big old goopy bead down the corner. Another tip is uh, you need to keep moving. This stuff dries, it sucks out the moisture quick. So as you're over here, you know, you're working your way across, go both ways, really get in there. Look at it, make sure you got good coverage. Go back over it, quickly hit a couple goobers that you left, and keep moving. If I keep working this spot, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start peeling it off. Want to get a bunch of material. Use a use one of these bad boys if you need to. Just to get just to get it in there. Okay. Remember we got we got this stuff that dries fairly quick. easier to grab a bunch of material with this versus this. Then come back, roll it out. It's the fastest way to get this thing covered quick. Most guys, most guys will just be in here just like trying to get more material and just slop it, slop it all in there and then roll out. Another, another little trick, take this guy and drag it in your corners, it'll help get some of those thick spots out. Just like that, it's done.
And stay tuned, I'm gonna show you guys another trick um, with some of those corners and making sure that no water is ever gonna get through.